The last section in chapter 16 talks about atmospherics. Atmospherics refers to the design of the environment by the stimulation of the five senses. Many retailers have discovered the subtle benefits of developing atmospherics that complement other aspects of the store design and the merchandise. By using different atmospheric elements to complement other elements of the store design that we talked about earlier, the layout, the signage, the exteriors, and the feature areas, retailers will attract more customers into the store. Retailers can keep customers in the store longer, get the customer to buy more, and ultimately create loyal customers. There are five atmospheric elements that can elicit an emotional response, which is what we're hoping for out of our customers because that ultimately leads to loyalty. The first atmospheric element is lighting. Lighting can highlight the merchandise and it can capture the mood or feeling and enhance the store's image. Retailers can also use different types of lighting to save energy expenses. Let's look at two different examples of lighting. Now, for those of you who've been to a Hollister or Abercrombie & Fitch, these are my favorite examples of lighting. We said that lighting can highlight merchandise, but I'm sorry, what is really being highlighted here in my example on the left? This is an image from Hollister, by the way. I'm sure you couldn't tell because you can't actually see what's going on in the picture because there's very little lighting. Some can argue that Hollister is using spotlighting. Yes, okay, fine, I'll give you that. But their spotlighting is quite poor and we can't actually see much. However, this highlighting is part of the store's image. So when you go into a Hollister and Abercrombie, and maybe your parents went with you when you were younger, they probably said to you, oh honey, I'm just going to wait out front because I can't see anything anyway. Or for those of you who are parents and your children go into Hollister, you're thinking the same thing. Oh, I'm just going to wait out here for you while you find some clothes because I can't really see anything anyway. Oddly enough, both Hollister and Abercrombie have used this lighting to their advantage because it does capture a mood. What mood are they capturing? I would say it's more of a trendy mood. It is a mood for their target audience, which is that tween market. So they're creating a mood for their customers through their lighting, or in this case, the lack of lighting. Now, opposite of Hollister and Abercrombie, we have an image over here of a store on the right selling beauty products. You can see that instead of having dark lighting, everything is lit up. Here we can see that we have lighting on top of the ceiling. We've got lights on the top of our shelving. We've got lights under our shelving. We've got bottom shelf lights. We've got under cabinet lighting. We have lighting everywhere. Why do we need to have more lights in a store like this? Well, we need to be able to highlight the merchandise. We want to be able to see what it is that we're going to be putting on our skin. We want to capture a mood of light and bright. We also want to enhance the store's image. If you went into a store that sold beauty products that had lighting like Hollister, what would you be thinking? Would you be willing to buy beauty products from a store that you can't actually see what you're going to be putting on your skin? Probably not, and I'd hope not. For people who would walk into a dark lit health and beauty store, they're probably going to turn right around and walk back out because they're thinking, ew, that's gross. It's dark. I can't see anything. Why can't I see anything? What are they trying to hide from me? So we can see how using different types of lighting is going to set the different types of moods for our different customers. The second element in atmospherics is color. 
The creative use of color can enhance a retailer's image and again help create a mood for the customer as they're shopping. We have two different types of colors that we talk about. The first set of colors is warm colors. Warm colors produce emotional, vibrant, hot, or active responses from our customers. These warm colors are our reds, golds, and yellows. You've probably heard before that these colors, these reds, golds, and yellows, are emotional. They're vibrant. So retailers use them to produce vibrant and active responses. Opposite to that, we have our cool colors. Cool colors are said to have peaceful, gentle, and calming effects, and they appear to induce abstract thinking. They are said to be blues, whites, and greens. These cool colors elicit feelings of peacefulness, gentleness, and calmness, and they induce that abstract thinking. If you think about it, it makes sense. You've probably heard that colors like white, blue, and green are peaceful. They're calming. They give you a sense of tranquility. If you look at these two images that we have here, on the left, we have our warm colors, producing our vibrant, hot, and emotional responses. On the right, we have our cool colors that are peaceful, gentle, and calming. But what do you notice in these images? The image on the left is Target, and the image on the right is Walmart. Who feels peaceful, gentleness, or calmness entering Walmart? I'm not quite sure that these colors really work in this sense, and I use this example just because it's quite interesting that I feel like I would have thought the opposite that Walmart would have been more emotional and vibrant because there sure are not peaceful or gentle or calming feelings walking around their stores. However, other stores, like our specialty stores, can use these types of colors to their benefit. If you want your customer to stay in the store longer and you want them to linger, you want them to browse, you are more likely to use cool colors. It's likely to keep your customers in the store moving at a slower pace. If we use our warm colors, our emotional, our vibrant colors, our hot colors, the customers in the store will move around much quicker. They'll move up and down the aisles faster. They'll get in and get out of the store much quicker. The third element in atmospherics is music. Music can either add to or detract from the atmospheric package. It can either help the retailer or seriously hurt the retailer. Research shows that customers say if they notice the music in the store and they don't like it, they will turn around and leave. If they do like it, most of the time they will ignore it and keep moving on. So music can be good as long as our customers like what we're playing. If we're playing music that our customers do not like, they are very likely to turn around and leave. Another component with our music is the tempo. Many of you have probably noticed at different restaurants, they play different types of music. In our fast food or our casual dining restaurants, is the tempo of the music fast or slow. The tempo is typically going to be a faster tempo. Why? Those restaurants want to turn the tables. They want you to get in and get out. They really don't want you to linger. So by playing faster music, the customers actually chew and eat faster and leave quicker than they would if their restaurant was playing slower temper music. Now, Think about a nice restaurant that you might have been to in the past. What type of music was playing at this restaurant? They probably had music playing that was at a much slower tempo. In this type of restaurant, they want you to relax. They want you to enjoy your meal. 
enjoy your experience at the restaurant. They are not concerned about turning the tables like a fast food restaurant is. These fine dining or nicer restaurants want to keep you in the store, in this case, the restaurant longer. Why? Why would a restaurant want to keep you in there longer? Isn't that counterintuitive? If I keep my customers in my restaurant longer, I make less money because I have less people coming in, right? No, not really. If I'm playing my slower music, I'm keeping my customers in the store or my restaurant longer, I'm more likely to get them to buy maybe alcohol along with their meal or a dessert. So by playing the slower music, I'm increasing the amount spent per check. I'm also increasing their relaxing environment and I'm likely to create a loyal customer through their satisfaction. The fourth atmospheric element is scent. Scent does have a large impact on a customer's mood and emotions. Research tells us that customers who spend time in a scented store think they spent less time in that store than they actually did. So if a store has a pleasant smell, customers spend more time in that store than they think they did. Scent could really work in the wrong way too. We could have retailers where there's a foul smell or an odor. In that case, the complete opposite is true because there is a scent in the store, but it's not pleasant. Customers are aware of the amount of time they're spending in that store, and they're likely to either turn around and leave immediately or spend as little time in the store as absolutely possible. Scent is one of those things that retailers need to be careful with. They need to make sure that the scent is appealing to their target market, to their customers, before they actually use the scent in the store. In these examples here, most of you can imagine what these items smell like. Some of you may find them attractive scents, and some of you may find them to be unpleasant scents. Retailers must be careful with scents as to attract their target audience while not offending any of their other customers. The last atmospheric element is taste. If a store has a restaurant or it offers snacks, the retailer is able to keep the customer in the store longer. The customer might take a break from shopping and go to the restaurant to eat, but then they will continue shopping. Some retailers don't have restaurants. Instead, they might be able to offer snacks. If there's some element of taste where if the customer gets hungry, they can stay in the store and eat and then continue shopping, the retailer is likely to keep them in that store longer. In my example here on the left, I'm not sure how many of you remember restaurants and department stores. This is a much older concept that's actually circling back. Not all of them had restaurants, but many did, which would keep the customers in the stores longer. Customers would go for a day of shopping at a department store. They would shop in the morning, break for lunch, and then keep shopping at that same store in the afternoon. I'm not sure if any of you remember restaurants and department stores or not. I'm guessing most of you are probably too young to remember that. However, some Neiman Marcuses do have cafes in them now. Neiman Marcus has had cafes for quite a while. Unfortunately, I'm not a huge Neiman Marcus shopper, so I'm not super familiar with cafes over the long run. In the example over here on the right, we have the Ikea restaurant. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with the Ikea restaurant. If you go to Ikea, you can stop in and eat. I believe they do offer all meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, so you can eat while you're shopping. For those of you who've been to Ikea, some of you go through the entire maze. You go in and out of every display. 
If you do this, you can spend hours at Ikea. So having this restaurant is really nice because you can stop in and eat and then continue on your shopping and stay in the store longer. Other stores that don't have restaurants are catching on to this idea though. Places like Old Navy, Burlington Coat Factory, Ross, and even TJ Maxx. You'll notice up near the checkouts, there are several rows, or gondolas, as we can call them, filled with snack items. Again, why is Old Navy or Ross or TJ Maxx selling snacks? Because they know if you're hungry, you're likely to leave. But if they offer you a snack, you would be more inclined to stay and continue on and finish with your shopping. So while this element does not appear in all retailers, it is becoming more common, even in retailers where taste would not be the norm, to add some element of taste, which will increase the time spent in that store. 